All right, here we have Rock and Roll Hoochie Coo. This is a great song written by uh, guitarist Rick Derringer, who was in the McCoys, but he wrote this when he started playing, uh, actually his band, the McCoys, teamed up with uh, the great Texas blues man, Johnny Winter. And it was called Johnny Winter And. And the first version of this was recorded around 1970. And that's what I'm basing this arrangement off of. So I'm going to go ahead and play it, and then we'll talk more about it. So it's a great song, a great guitar song, and I saw Johnny Winter and with Rick and Derringer around this time, around 1970, um, and um, it was at the height of his career, uh, it might have been 71, I can't remember, 70, 71, and um, <clears throat> they were just burning it up on guitar. It was one of the most memorable concerts guitar-wise that I ever remember. And um, he was at the top of his game, and in that band he was, uh, Johnny Winter was getting sort of away from his doing straight-ahead serious blues into more uh, rock and roll, you know, because he started out uh, doing a lot of rock and roll in Texas. And um, so he's kind of getting back to his uh, Chuck Berry roots, like, the, he did uh, with Johnny Winter and they did uh, uh, Johnny Be Good and then they also did, you know, the Stones, uh, Jumpin' Jack Flash, a great version of that. And then Rock and Roll Hoochie Coo. And um, the, the later version that Rick Derringer recorded in 73 had uh, background singers and it was more, uh, it was produced in a different way. It wasn't as raw as the uh, early version but and it was a bigger hit with Rick Derringer but I like the early version you know so in talking about this um, it starts out with a kind of a hard pickup you're doing a scrape and then an upstroke on an A and then a downstroke on a G so it's A G and then you're doing um, these chords now uh, they're on adjacent frets. Uh, the chord is fingers, I would do fingers one and three. You might think fingers one and two, but believe me, one and three, I think you could kind of slide it a little better. And plus, that's a shape that we use a lot for like ninth chords or different seventh chords. Uh, it's a tritone. Uh, I think in the medieval period that was called the devil's interval, you know, tritones. But what he's doing, he's sliding into an E seventh chord. So it's like taking an E seventh and sliding into it. But it's not the whole chord, it's just the 
the third and the seventh. So he's going from, well, I'm not going to explain the whole theory of it, but. Now, the rhythm of this part is sort of three notes against four counts, and it kind of changes within the beat like a kaleidoscope. Starts with an eighth note, and then it's all sixteenths. So it's one and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. And this, uh, when I changed to, I moved across the street one fret higher, but it's the same chord shape. It's still first and third fingers, one fret apart. So, and, and um, one thing about this is that you want to mute all the strings that are on this side of the chord, on the first three strings. And then when you do this chord, you want to mute the first two strings, but the tip of your finger needs to mute the fifth string. You're still hitting the sixth string open, but if you touch the fifth string, then you don't have to worry about just hitting those two strings. You could just kind of strum with all kinds of abandon, you know, like kind of be sloppy with your strum if you're muting all the strings you don't want to hear. So it's like, again, one and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. And then the verse is one and two E and three and a four E and. And so you're doing an A chord. Sorry, a bass chord, down, up, down, and then down, 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 up, down. When you do the open six string, it's a C chord, and then you hit an open six string and hit that D chord. When you hit the D chord, the tip of your finger should mute the six string. So this, the E is cut off hit the D. It's no longer ringing. Otherwise it'll sound muddy if you're like that. You might like that, but um, I don't. So anyway, one and two E and a three and E and a four E and. I didn't count that good. One and two E and three two eighth notes, and it's, uh, the picking is very important. It's down, 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 up, down, up, down, up, down. The last note is a grace note slide. It's an immediate slide, but it's off beat. So it's right before the fourth beat, and you're tying into the fourth beat. Uh, so counting it carefully, it's one and two E and a three E and a four and. And then you do the same rhythm later. Well, the next you do these chords again. Down, up, down, 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 up, down. And then it's an octave higher. Same riff, but played quite differently. It's a bend into the first string. And I'm doing the same picking, basically. I'm cutting off the bass with the heel of my hand, and then bending, and then down, up, down, up, down, up, down, like that. And it's the same rhythm. One and two E and a three E and a four and. Um, it's really kind of important to understand the rhythm. Uh, it, and I'm reading it off, you know, I've got it all written out with the 
proper rhythms. But now when you do this bend, you want to already have your first finger on the fifth fret of the first string and you're stretching. This is a typical Johnny Winter kind of hand position because he used, um, he didn't use his pinky when he played lead guitar. He did uh, first three fingers, just three fingers. But it was uh, a stretched out kind of uh, hand position. You, if you watch Johnny Winter play on any videos, you'll see this kind of angled, stretched, like I'm crunching up my first finger and then I'm reaching with fingers two and three. And when I do that bend, my thumb is pushing against the fingers and you have to use your wrist. It's kind of like turning a doorknob counterclockwise while you're squeezing it at the same time. Sort of turning and squeezing. B.B. Uh, King called it the squeeze, you know. And then you hit, you've already got this finger ready. You don't want to bend and then have to jump on that note. You want to already have it fingered. So down, down, up, down, up. So you're doing fingers one, three, stretched three, one, stretched three on eight, and then seven with the second finger, fifth fret with the first finger. So it's open, eighth fret bent, fifth fret, eight, five, eight, seven, five, and then s keep it stretched when you slide. I'm sorry, I missed it here. Slide two frets with your third finger after. Don't slide from fret seven, slide from fret eight to 10. Okay, now he could be bending it. I'm pretty sure he slid it, but uh, so that's quite different from this, the octave lower riff. Um, that's easier than this, the bending part. But but if you get through all that, the next part of the song is quite a bit easier. You go to the F chord and it's one and rest and three and four and one and two E and a three and four E and a two and four one and two E and a three and four E and a one and two and three sustained chords. Quite a bit. So if you're just working on this at this level, 
this is at the end of book three. It's really challenging, especially the bending. That's real lead guitar type stuff, you know, and uh, probably the most uh, challenging kind of licks that we've done so far. So I'll do it kind of slow. I'll do it um, fast again. Let's try it again. Like. Chiku. Enjoy, like, subscribe, uh, look for John Hedger Guitar Studio on Instagram and uh, Facebook. I've got a Facebook page. So I'll see you in the next one. Have fun. <laughs>